Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk a little more about fire safety. Hopefully you saw my last video where I discussed the fire hazard potential with either a diode or CO2 based laser system and uh, hopefully you found that a little bit uh, informational and educational. Today let's talk a little bit about what to do if you do have a fire. Some common ways that you can uh, put that fire out because that's going to be our number one priority. So the first and probably the simplest thing would be just a simple bottle of water. This is going to be very inexpensive and fairly um, effective depending on the size of the fire. Probably a little better on a little, you know, a small diode based system. If you have a little flare up, you could give it a squirt or two, but you got to be careful to not get the water on your electronics because that's going to spell probably the end for that uh, piece of equipment. <laughs> get that out of the way. The next would be a fire blanket. Hopefully you've uh, seen these before, but pretty simple operation. Usually there's going to be a place to mount it and then you have these two pull tabs on the bottom. So you go ahead and pull that and that blanket's going to come out and you just throw that on top of the fire. So this, the idea there is you're just smothering it out. This is going to work for, again, probably your smaller systems. If it's a diode based system, uh, you could throw this over the whole thing. Now the fire could still burn uh, underneath the blanket for a while. So you probably got to kiss that laser system goodbye, but at least you're saving, you know, your house or, or whatever else. Um, this can flare up again if you remove the blanket and it's not going to be super effective for a laser or a CO2 based system because you're going to have a hard time getting this underneath the laser head and your uh, whatever you're cutting you know without burning yourself so may not be the best but it could be uh, it could be a solution or you know if you were able to uh, depending on again the size of the piece if you could take that out and toss that you know, like for me, I work in my garage, I could toss it on the concrete floor and take my fire blanket and cover that and uh, put that fire out. Next, we'll talk about our fire extinguishers. Now, the most common fire extinguisher that you probably already have is going to be your dry chemical uh, fire extinguisher. These you'll typically find around the house in the kitchen, um, but uh, they will be marked dry chemical. Now, I'm going to put a video here that just shows somebody using one of these. And what you have to realize with a dry chemical uh, fire extinguisher is that the dry chemical that's inside of this is toxic and it's very corrosive so again you're, you're probably going to need to kiss whatever piece of equipment that you um, that you use this on goodbye if you if you've ever seen one of these in use I, I haven't used one of these on a car before whatever you spray this on is just going to be covered with this ultra fine powder it is horrendous to try and clean up and again it's very toxic and uh, it's going to eat away at metals it's going to ruin electronics so if you spray this on your whether it's diode or co2 based system you probably need to kiss that goodbye and the final one this big daddy right here this is a five pound co2 uh, carbon dioxide fire extinguisher i just got this for my uh, CO2 laser and these are quite a bit more expensive I think I paid about $212 uh, to get this shit from Amazon uh, versus you know these guys are 30 to 50 dollars if, if that um, but the benefit and the reason that I, I highly recommend the CO2 and again I'm gonna put a little video in here to show somebody discharging the CO2 is this is just compressed carbon dioxide and the idea, the way that this functions is that, that carbon dioxide di displaces the oxygen. And so you take away the oxygen component of your fire triangle. So heat, fuel, and oxygen. You remove the oxygen, then no more fire. But the benefit, the biggest benefit of this is that it's not gonna damage your equipment at all. So when you uh, put out the fire, your CO2 laser, your diode laser is still gonna function. So quite an investment, but uh, well worth it. There are a few other types of uh, fire extinguishers that I'm really not gonna cover. I initially looked at Halotron um, or Halon type uh, fire extinguishers. Their, um, the Halotron, like one of their base components has been outlawed because it's bad for the, um, I think the ozone layer. So the, the only way that you can get Halotron fire extinguishers refilled anymore is you've got to send them to a company that recycles Halotron from other products. Um, so it wasn't really an option for me. I know if I, I wanna, if I ever need to use this, there's 
quite a few places local to me that can inspect and recharge a CO2 fire extinguisher. So that was the reason that I chose this particular um, fire extinguisher to invest into my laser based system. So hopefully you found this all very informational again and it will help you decide how you want to protect your investment. And uh, you know, overall, again, safety is the number one concern. So make sure that you're well prepared anytime you fire up your machines. And yeah, let's, uh, let's just keep burning together, stick around. Hopefully, if you find this useful, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, um, and uh, that'll, that'll help me out in the long run. If you uh, care to use any of my affiliate links down below, I appreciate it. But uh, overall, let's just continue this journey together and let's keep on burning.